Hello everyone, welcome to Lime Health from Within. So I'm going to share with you something today that's really, really exciting. I've created something and it is called Installing the Cheerleader Back Into Your Life. You know, when you were born, you had a cheerleader in your mind who said, yes, you can do it, yay. Every baby on the planet comes on to the planet with a cheerleader that spurs it on, that motivates it, that has a phenomenal self-belief. And that little baby which reaches for a toy or something catches its eye and it's out of the reach. They don't go like, oh, I can't do this. Oh, oh, I keep falling over. I'm not going to walk. When a baby is like to eat a banana, he's like, oh, here I have the banana in my ear, in my air, on my face. It's enjoying itself so, so much. I have a picture when I gave um, my daughter Maria uh, some fruit the first time and it was everywhere except in her mouth and I loved that. She didn't give up on trying to feed herself. The life of a child is trying to do this constantly. They don't give up. They don't have this escape artist. They keep on going because a baby has something in their head which has the yay you can do this yes keep reaching keep trying you'll get there and when you're a parent and you have this child you'll be that second cheerleader like telling your child yes you can do it yes you can walk walk to mommy and as she's walking these wobbly steps. I remember that my daughter was so proud of herself. She had her own voice in her mind, like, wow, look at me, I can do this. So when we're little, we have this voice in our head all the time. And when we're kids, we want to be motivated. Everything we do is great. Most of us have this voice because When you're born, your first experience is being looked at, being judged, being assessed. The doctors, the nurses, the brothers and sisters, the grandmothers, they come and look at the baby in the hospital. And the baby doesn't go like, oh, don't look at me. Oh, I'm ugly. I don't have any hair. Oh, my skin is bad. I'm having a bad day. No, they love when you look at them. So when I had Maria in her stroller and I went walking with her, she loved it. When, when people looked at her, she kicked her small legs. She loved attention. She liked it because her internal cheerleader said, I'm worth it. A cheerleader does this thing like waving their pom-poms, like, yes, you can do it. Yay. And even when the athletes, they're losing the cheerleader doesn't drop the pom-poms down and goes off the pitch. No, they encourage the athletes like, yes, next time you're going to do better. I believe in you. The cheerleader spurs you on. It drives you on. So imagine if you had a cheerleader in your head saying, yay, yes, this has got your name on it. You can do this. You are amazing at this. No one can do this better than you. This is you. This is what you're good at. How different would your life be? And it's not just about having that cheerleader. Just imagine if you have a loving parent saying to you like, Oh, I noticed how smart you are. No one is better than you. You are the best at this. You're the best one at this. You're better than everyone else. Muhammad Ali, he said something I really loved. He said, I'm the greatest. And even when I know, I I knew I wasn't. And he became the greatest. 
What a concept. Muhammad Ali, he told himself he was the best. He was the greatest. He didn't really believe it, but he kept it saying. And something happened. He became the best. He became the greatest. When he started to believe it, everyone around him believed it. And this is so, so important. Think of your life. If you had a cheerleader, a doting parrot who absolutely believed in you, who filled you up with all the praise you wanted to hear. If you had a teacher who was so happy to have them in, in their class, a gifted teacher that saw how smart you were, and a teacher who, whose job it was to see every gift in every child. But, you know, a lot of teachers, they damage children, like children uh, putting up their hands and the teacher saying like, oh, you don't know the answer. Put your hand down. Stop showing off. Stop drawing attention. I have clients um, almost every day who say, I was so damaged by a teacher because my teacher said in front of the whole class, Oh, the brains in your family, they weren't handed out. When they got to you, they didn't give you anything. What's wrong with you? My sister was in my class and she was so clever. What happened to you? One of my clients said, a teacher said to her, like, you were a drip or you are a drip that never dropped. Another client said, I never put my hand up because I didn't have anything to say. When I put my hand up, they just laughed with me. So I felt so uncomfortable drawing that attention. So it meant they just got the belief, I'm not smart enough. My teacher always said, I didn't need to think that I got embarrassed when putting my my hand up. He encouraged me to put my hand up, to speak, even to believe in myself. But most of my teachers, they diminished me. They squashed me. And that's what I hear over and over again from all my clients. If you go to a park, if you go to a swimming pool, what do you do? What do you see? The the kids they say like mommy, daddy. Uh, look at me, look at me on the swing, pushing myself on the swing, running on the slide. Children don't have that filter, like don't look at me, I might get it wrong, don't notice me, I might fail. They have quite the opposite. They have a cheerleading voice which says, look at me, see what I'm good at. My little girl would sing in the car when I was driving her to school and she would she would just start to sing a song or start to uh, talk about the play that she saw. She would perform. Anytime when I asked Maria, she would be really ready to perform because she knew I admired her when she did that. She got so, so much self-belief. From 2 to 14, the cheerleader has gone away. So the parent, the doting parent, the teacher who praises you, it has gone away. The voice changed in don't do this, don't do that, um, don't draw attention. And often we have relatives too, grandparents, another generation who says, what are you parading yourself no one is looking at you. Stop drawing attention. Stop showing off. So here's a question I have for you. What happened to your cheerleader? I promise you, you know that you came onto this planet waving pom-poms, jumping up and down, like waving your name, shouting your name. You can do it. You're fantastic. You're amazing. I promise you that even if you didn't have a doubting parent, at least until you were 18 months, you were cheering yourself. A baby doesn't uh, wake up and say like, ooh, I better don't wake up the whole house because I'm hungry. The baby is just like, I'm worth it. I'm going to wake up everyone because I'm hungry. 
So you know that you had that. You had a cheerleader, a loving parent, a teacher you thought you were amazing. You even had a best friend who told you how good you were. So what happened along the way? What happened to your cheerleader? What happened to that best friend who believed in you? What happened to that doting parent? I was watching something about Eminem the other day and his horrible time at school when he was locked into lockers, beaten up, hurt. But he was determined to be a rap star. And he went to rap. And he was the only white guy with blue eyes. And he was laughed off the stage. But back he came and back he came. And you know why he went back? Because he had something. He had a cheerleader in his head. You will win. You will make it. You are a rap star. And he is one of the most successful, most influential music stars of all time. But if he didn't have that internal voice cheering it on when everyone else was booing him, laughing him off the stage, he wouldn't have done it. So as a therapist, I see so many people in my office almost every month, sometimes every week. And they tell me like, oh, I've written this great book, this great play. I've, I've done this amazing research. Um, I've got this great idea, but I'm scared to present it to my boss, to my colleagues, to my husband. And they always have a story about someone in their life, a teacher, a parent, who didn't believe in them, who laughed at them, like, who? No one's going to listen to you. Nobody is going to take any notice. And that is a stupid, stupid idea. Lots of people diminish them. Lots of people hurt them. And it makes them shut down. But other people like Eminem go like, I'm just going to keep on going. One of my clients, she's a quite famous supermodel. And uh, she needed to get on the cover of a magazine. But everyone told her, like, oh, you're never going to become that, that supermodel. But she kept on believing in herself. John Lennon was told, you're on the road to nowhere. No one is looking up at you. And a lot of people didn't have a voice cheering that on. They said, like, you can't make it. Harry Potter, that best-selling novel, was rejected. J.K. Rowling, they, tro- they told her, you're never going to make it. But she kept on coming back. Meryl Streep was told, you're not attractive enough. You can never become a movie star. But that one, she told these people, you're only one voice in a sea of voices. And I'm not going to listen to you. So lots of people, they shut down their cheerleader. And what they've done it done is they replace the cheerleader with a critic voice i can't do it i shouldn't do it i'd better not do it what if i do it i'm going to fail i'm ridiculous what if i speak and i go completely red or i stutter but then you have the meryl streep of the world who are diminished who are criticized but they bounce back like a big big rubber ball Whoopi Goldberg often tells a story and they said to her, you're never going to make it. But she had that voice in her head that kept on cheering it on. And that's the thing that people who are successful, they have this voice, they cheer them on. A lot of people, they don't have that voice. So I was thinking, why don't I just do this project and I give everyone this voice? If someone would have a cheerleader cheering them on. Like if I work with clients who fail to make it, how about installing this cheerleader in your life now? And many of these clients have come back and said, like, wow, installing that cheerleader was a game changer. They still installed a cheerleader and I watched how they blossomed. They come back from people who wish to diminish them, who wish to bully them. So this is what we are going to do today. You can play this recording again. 
children who are uh, starting from seven, they can join into this audio because I did it with my children too and it has changed their life enormously, incredibly. I'm going to take you through a recording where you're going to go back and find your cheerleader and then you're going to find why it went away and then we're going to bring it back. I promise you it's not difficult. In fact, it's quite easy. It's fun and it will change your life. Imagine if your how your life is going to be if the critical voice went away. This voice of don't do this, you might get it wrong. Like this voice who said don't go after that boy or that girl because ah, they're going to reject you. But now you're going to install that voice like, yay, you can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. I wanted to become a therapist and I wanted to be the best. I wanted to uh, be in the media. I wanted to make these videos that could motivate people because I was diminished so much by family, by teachers, even even people who were supposed to be my friends, but I kept on bouncing back and I saw the difference in my own life. So I can promise you, this is going to change your life. So when I called, on, uh, called up that media and I uh, presented myself and, and they told to me like, mm, no, we're not interested in that story, but I kept on calling and every day I kept on talking and I kept on calling these magazines. And eventually... Some of them said yes. So I was so, so happy because I knew I needed to bounce back. I was in newspapers so much. I was in magazines so much. And that was because my inner cheerleader told me, you can do this. And that's not because I'm better than you. Because my cheerleader cheered me on even when the people at the other end of the phone hang up. I've got times in my life where I needed to be do really difficult conversations and my cheerleader was like just do it pick up the phone you'll feel so much better when you've done it you know I wasn't thinking like oh this person is going to is not going to like me um the people uh, is going to uh drop the phone down don't do this don't do that I used to have a voice who said, don't do this. No, they're going, not going to like you. They're going to reject you. They're going to dump you. They're going to leave you. I had that voice. But now I have a voice. Do it now. Do it straight away. You're going to feel so good. You have the skills to talk to someone. Even when someone criticizes you, you can do this. Even before we begin now, I want you to think about your life. Think about your life without a cheerleader who says, who says you can't do this, you shouldn't do this. Don't even try. Dance like no one is looking. This impression I love. Why do they say this? Because if someone is looking, we think like, oh, I don't like the moves like no one is listening why do they say this because lots of people are really scared of singing oh that's a horrible sound oh don't ever sing again you see many of us in comes a critic and if you spoke to your friends the way your critic speaks to you you wouldn't have a lot of friends left your friends would say, oh my God, I don't want to see you anymore. You're so critical. Like if someone would say like, oh, I saw you doing a Facebook Live. You were so bad. You can't dance. You look awful on that. You can't speak. Then it starts to shut you down. Here's the truth. Criticism builds you doesn't build you up it brings you down so if in one hand you praise yourself your self-esteem goes up and up and up when you criticize yourself it goes down and down and down 
So you have the power to push your self-esteem right up and to push it right down. Because when your own voice, it really motivates you and it can really build up your self-esteem. Like, for example, if someone says something critical to you, you can think like, oh, they're having a bad day. You know, I'm not going to accept that. But if you're critical or bad to yourself, it goes in like lotion on your skin. Here's the good news. When you praise yourself, it also goes in and it stays in. And when someone else says like, oh, you're great, you're amazing. Oh, it's not going to go in as if you do it yourself. When your boss says you're the best, you're the most loyal, the most indispensable part of the team. By the way, could you work weekends? There's something he wants for you. And, and we know that. But when you praise yourself, there's no agenda. When you put yourself down, there's no agenda. So you just decide it's not true. Nothing, nothing, nothing will boost your self-esteem like self-praise. The most important words you are about to hear is when you praise yourself, it means so much more. It has such an impact. It has such an impact and it goes much better in your head. Because when someone is praising you you're thinking like "Mm, what are you going to sell what do you want to get from me but when you say to yourself you're so great you're so amazing you can do this you're phenomenal you're awesome this is what you're awesome this is what that means you only want one thing and that's like making a better person of yourself whatever you tell your mind it believes it and i promise that Let's just do something. Put your two fingers, your thumb and your direction finger, the first finger together. And you you make a ring and with your other two fingers, you pull that ring. And you say, my name is Lime, my name is Lime, my name is Lime. And your fingers are going to go open. And now you're going to say your own name. My name is, my name is, my name is. And you see that your fingers keep attached because that's the truth you see we tell ourselves things that we feel strong about we when we tell ourselves things that make us weak we feel weak i'm smart i'm significant i matter let's do that i'm smart i'm significant i matter you see how your fingers keep glued to each other now do the opposite i'm a loser I'm useless, I'm hopeless, I'm, I'm significant. Your body becomes weak when you put yourself down and it becomes strong when you praise yourself. And you know what's easy? The more you do it, the easier it gets. The easier it gets, the more you do it. Think about praise as a muscle. If you use that muscle, it grows. So you are going to use your praise muscle every day by saying, I can do this, I matter, I'm significant. You have a cheerleader who says, yay, yes, I can do this. And as your muscle, your praise muscle gets better, gets stronger, your criticism muscle, it's going to wither away, it's going to disappear so do you understand that it's quite easy let's go on to part two finding out what your cheater was like let's look at where your cheerleader went why it went away and then we're going to reinstall that cheerleader and put it right back thank you enjoy the second session